Mega is an improvised satire from the staff of a fictional mega church. And this is Mega coming to you from Twin Hills Community Church, where every single week we're giving our mega church a tiny family feel. We love to introduce you to members of our church staff and people from our community. And I always find it to be a treat and a treasure. And per usual, I'm joined by my co-host. He's the youth pastor for our high school ministry called Climax. Please welcome your friend and mine, Gray Haas. What is up, JC? is to my right yet to my left hallie how are you so blessed way too blessed to be stressed well just like hold on let me think about this for a second how do i want to do it um uh well just like jesus offers security to all his followers in the form of the holy ghost and a host of heavenly angels that are fighting for us invisibly around us every single minute of every day our guest today is personal security here on campus it's my pleasure to introduce stebby shark how you feeling today steb or, uh, you know you i'm, I'm do, feeling great do you want to do personal security or do you want to do christian uh, well like, then i figured we would just start there and have it all be about that oh okay great oh, yeah, okay yeah. I think maybe do motorcycle, like the head of our, 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 our motorcycle club, like our. Oh, actually, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just do the whole top again. The, your hair, you look so amazing. <laughs> it's like really doing it for me. I love it. Okay. Hold I on. love that you guys. Just like Jesus um, is my easy rider. Oh, easy, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> Well, just like Jesus. Oh, you is... got to do the whole top again. Sorry. Yeah. Because I got to edit these for you too. But that'll be already in the intro. I have to do the video edits. Oh, 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 duh, duh, duh. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry. No, you're good. Sorry. Hiya, I'm Hallie Levant, and this is Mega, coming to you from Twin Hills Community Church, where every single week we're giving our mega church a tiny family feel, introducing you to members of our church staff and people from our community, and I find it to be a treat and a treasure. And per usual, I'm joined by my co-host. He's the youth pastor for our high school ministry called Climax. Welcome, Gray Haas. I'm not playing COD because I've got God, Hallie. How are you? Oh, I am feeling so blessed. Well, just like Jesus is my easy rider, our guest today leads the CMAs, the Christian Motorcycle Association. It's your friend and mine, Stebby Shark. How you feeling today, Steb? I'm feeling great, guys. Thanks so much for having me on. Awesome. Yeah, Stebby. Very, very uh, cool look you have. Just uh, a very... It did, now, did, did you just take your... Did you just ride over here? Because you, 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 your hair is you're a little windblown. bit... You're windblown. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah. And actually... Um, so usually what I do, I wear a helmet because you got to be safe, you know. Sure. Yeah. Safety you never know? takes a holiday. Exactly. Um, speaking of safety, uh, I, I, I love doing security at the church. You awesome. know, I feel like ever since I came over um, from my old church, uh, you know, you guys have just welcomed me in so, so with open arms, you know. Well, so I, think I feel it's like cool I brought my arms. I think it's cool to have a female security guard. You're the only one. I mean, every other security guard we have here at Twin Hills on campus is a big, huge fella, you know, with all of these muscles. He could pick someone up and just throw them right out the door if he wanted to. And I think it's cool that we have a gal. It makes me feel really safe, actually, because gals have other specific skills, don't they? Yeah, we do. You know, I, and it's uh, most of the time people just aren't expecting it. Yeah. yeah. You know? Somebody well, might aren't... come into the church and, you know, they'll come next to me and be like, you know, where's the offering? I feel like I want to take from that. And they don't know that I'm concealed carry. Oh, that's really? Right. Wow. You? That's awesome. And are you carrying right now? Always. Wow. Wow. That's cool. Well, I yeah. wanted to get into a little bit about, you know, of course, your, your, your biking club or what, whatever it's called, CM, CMAs. Uh, now, do you ever get the Christian Motorcycle Association? Now, do you ever get that confused with, I don't know, the Christian Music Awards or the Country Music Awards or the Columbian, Columbian Marketing uh, Apprenticeship? Yeah, actually, mainly the last one because I used oh, really? to be in marketing. Oh, yeah. you did? In Columbia. So really? I didn't even, yeah, for the longest time, I just, it was a big blind spot because I was a part of the Hells Angels, you know, I'd, oh, wow, all of that. And I kept looking for outreach, you know, I kept looking for different kinds of things I could join, but it just, every time I typed in CMA, I was just thinking of work, you know, yeah, I just I, didn't even When I Googled it. you and when I Googled CMAs, you know, I guess Colombian Marketing Association is what the cartel is just calling themselves now. Isn't that right? They were trying oh, to rebrand. Wow. And so rather yeah, than yeah. saying, hey, we're the Colombian cartel, they're saying we're the, the Colombian CMAs. Marketing Association. So 
you were with the yeah. Hells Angels. Is that how you got involved mm-hmm. in kind of that more dangerous stuff? Yeah, and actually, you kind of hit the nail on the head for the uh, the cartel. So I was doing the marketing, and I didn't realize you know, I was doing marketing for the cartel. Oh, wow. And what, what does marketing yeah. look like for a cartel? Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I'm really into guns. I'm pro-gun ownership. So mm-hmm. I just thought that they were uh, uh, pivoting from, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we were, it was a lot of, like, paper kind of supplies that we did originally mm. just straight over to AR-15s. And so mm. I thought, you know, maybe they're doing a – it's a new direction, but – Come to find out, it was the cartel. And, wow. uh, you know, Hell's Angels, uh, they're really uh, big into that, too. They probably wow. wouldn't want me saying that on air, but, wow. you know, they're connected. Well, what, a, <sighs> what a testimony that yeah. gives you. And, I mean, you know, it's all covered in the blood. I mean, Jesus died for cartel members and Hell's Angels the same way he did, you know, good and upright people. And I just forgive me if this is too personal a question, but are any of those tattoos you have, are any of those from the Hell's Angels days that, you know, are things, well, you wouldn't necessarily get printed on your body now? Yeah, you know, I've asked Jesus a lot for forgiveness for all of this, and it's awesome. hard because, you know, you know, when you feel like you're washed with the blood of Jesus, a lot of those sins, you don't get a reminder of daily, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm literally in my shower washing, and I see, you know, Bart Uh-oh. Simpson looking up at me Oh wow! with, uh, or, or, you know, riding a hog. Uh-huh. And I just, you know, it's like, you know, I'm pro, I'm pro people ride motorcycles, but you know, to have that tatted on my skin. Yeah. yeah. And you know? you've got that droopy one. dog there yeah. saying, did I do that? Mm-hmm. Did I do so that? that mm-hmm. That's a and droopy very, dog saying a, a Steve pretty, Urkel thing. And it's a pretty sexual tattoo. Yeah. Oh. You know, there's a, yeah. it's very graphic. Yeah. So I guess and then that one on your neck, on pants on. that one on your neck, you know, it's more, it's kind of, what is that Calvin and Hobbes, but Calvin has like devil horns and is, is peeing a stream of urine onto the word society. Yep. Onto society. Oh, and then wow. we got Hobbes taking a dookie on the other side. Oh, wow. And wow. he's taking a duke on what's that word. I can't, I can't read it. It's, it sucks, but with an F oh. you know, oh. for the kids that may be listening. I see. Wait, so he's taking a uh, number two it, on the words it, it F's. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Society. Well, it. Yeah. Oh, 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 that's all one, one phrase. It, yeah. 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 Society. It's really old it phrase. F's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we said it a lot in the eighties. You know? Yeah. Well, I would we not remember that. Well, I do think that, um, it's such a powerful idea that you could have a life where you worked for the CMAs uh, the cartel where you're in the hell's angels, but then the powerful redemptive story of Jesus changed your life. How did Jesus enter the equation? I always, uh, want to know when he first broke through to you, you know, that's a great question. And I'm telling you selling, uh, firearms through the cartel, is a slippery slope. Oh, so, sure. uh, you know, one thing led to another, I was selling like American girl dolls on the web, the dark web, who knows where they were going. And, uh, oh. you know, one of the, one of these things I was selling on the, on the side of it, it was a, it was like a little race car and it had a, a Bible verse on it. And all it said was Jesus wept. Awesome. And I was like, what? Who's Jesus? First of all. Okay. And he uh, wept. Yeah. Uh, cried. Yeah. And like I uh, I looked it up, I googled Jesus and eventually I, you know, stumbled upon a um a website that told me everything I needed to know. Um and then uh also my friend Gene Simmons shared the gospel with me. Rich awesome. Gene Simmons. Now is Gene Simmons the workout guy who disappeared with that cute curly head of hair and short shorts that he would always get all the gals in the eighties to you know pick up their feet and put on some leg warmers and shake their rumps and lose some calories? You know, what's kind of wild is he's also a Christian. <laughs> but really? uh the Gene yeah, the Gene Simmons I'm talking about is from the band Kiss. Or no oh. wait. Yeah, Was Knights in, in K- Satan's service. 
Knights of Satan's yeah. servants. Oh wow! I, I and, and for some reason I thought he was Jewish. Oh wow! But no, he, I think that's Ozzy Osbourne. Oh really? His, yeah, his wife's redheaded. She's got to be Ashkenazi. So your friend Gene exactly. Simmons from the band Kiss shared the good news. Oh, but you're not saying he necessarily brought you to Jesus. He, you just confirmed the information about Jesus with yeah, Gene yeah, Simmons. Yeah, yeah. After I after I googled Jesus uh, wept. Uh, you know, jeans and I were getting high. I did, you know, God oh, forgave me, but I did crack again. back in the day. He was strung out next to me, and um, he kind of just confirmed, yeah, I know Jesus is a, who is a person, but also God, and I had never heard of something like that, you know? Wow. Because, you know, I heard of, like, a lot of other faiths and stuff, but I never heard about a cool cat that, you know, you, turned you, water into wine, you know, was wow. God, too. Wow, you had heard of a lot of other faiths, but you had never heard of Christianity. That's amazing, because I consider that like one of the main ones. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I was born in Colombia, and that's how you I were. started uh, oh, marketing wow. down there. And so, um, you, you know, I've eradicated heard of any accent. I mean, you have no accent whatsoever from being Colombian. I'll right. tell you that right were now. Were your parents both Colombian? No, not at all. Actually, oh, okay. one, uh, my mom was from France, and uh, my dad is from Germany. So I think somewhere in the middle, maybe I just got no accent. Like and maybe how did there they were so end up many. In Colombia. Uh, they also worked for the cartel. Oh, oh, okay, so it was a family business or yeah, sort of a family. Yeah, yeah. yeah you. Can, I, I see. It's almost like working for a you know Ford Auto Parts or something, and then you know your son does yeah. it, and then your next kid does it. And, yeah. yeah, you know, and they, know. you know, yeah, especially like if the if the base of the company is in one country, they're always offering you know if to cover travel and things like that for you to relocate. And so yeah. that was a situation with them. It's a and legacy then, uh, thing. Yeah, like yeah, if yeah. you went to Harvard, your kid gets to go to Harvard. That's just exactly, how it works. exactly. You know, healthcare and all that too. So. Wow. So, so, I mean, I just love this story that you worked for the cartel, you were in the Hells Angels, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming you were in the Hells Angels, were, were you in the Hells Angels here, or was it, is that, is there also a Colombian chapter of that? Uh, actually, if there is, I don't know about it. I probably would have okay. joined it, but, um, you know, I, uh, was trying to... <sighs> trying to get out of the cartel stuff and uh you know i met a couple of hell's angels and they were like you know not all of us are involved in it you know we're oh. just kind of and i was like oh you know i already have a bike i already ride and uh so it was really through the cartel that i um you know kind of made my way into the hell's angels and it didn't seem as as intense wow. stuff i was doing for the cartel so it actually seemed like a godsend you know even though it was hell sent you know yeah well, can you ride a motorcycle from Colombia to the United States? Like, can you just come all the way up through Central America and just cross right over the border and bring, bring your hog into the good old U.S. of A.? It took me a minute, but yeah, I mean, again, I, um, I was part of the cartel and selling a lot of stuff through there. So they had other roads oh. and stuff. Oh, I, they got I, I, won't, I won't, other ways to get over here. A really? coyote. You came with a coyote. Yeah, some may this. call it that, but uh, others may call it uh, the back of a truck. Okay. In uh, like a semi. Mm. I see. With other mm. AR-15s. So, how did you end up friends with hardcore death metal band Kiss? You know, everybody, for all the bad that Hell's Angels has has done, you know they. Uh, they they really opened me up to the hard rock community too mm. and then eventually mm. i started listening to christian hard rock i didn't awesome. know that uh the band striper is yeah. christian metal yeah. band yeah you know so a lot of the a lot of how i came to know jesus they say they say you have to be introduced to something seven times before you believe it wow. right oh cool and I, I i truly believe that's what happened with me you know really yeah, so you I had mean, to you had to know about Jesus seven times before you finally you denied him six times. You're double Peter. That's right. And that's actually I have ironically I have a tattoo of two Petas on the back on my back. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that looks cool. So it's kind of like a it's a double Peter. Peter. Oh, I get it, man. That's cool. Well, that wasn't a... Peter, right? That denied Christ. I yeah. think it was. Oh yeah. Was it Peter? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was. I was like, did I just say? <laughs> 
No, no I didn't that say was... devil. I didn't say devil pita. Oh, oh, you've got a tattoo of pita, like pita bread. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, who are you talking about? I'm. Oh, I'm talking. Sorry, I'm talking about pita in the Bible. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that also. That's a one no, time. No, oh, not yeah. the bread. I'm saying. I'm. I'm saying pita. Like, um, I know Jesus probably ate I pita too. I never deny a good pita. I know. I'm not saying pita. I'm saying pita. Like, hey, I'm pita. Can you translate for him, honey? His accent's kind of... <laughs> well, I can't stop looking at the tattoo on the front of both your forearms. One says human, real big in big black letters, and the other says being on the other one. And if you sit with the left on top of the right, it says human being. And if you sit with the right on top of the left, it says being human. That's cool. Thanks so much. I um, That was probably the fifth time I saw Jesus. I was on peyote, and I got the, the tattoo. And I remember thinking, wow, but Jesus was a human being. That's right. And he was just being human. That's wow. Oh, I mean, wow. you can think of it like I Pete, got God like Pete, the name Pete. I was saying like Pete. Hey, Pete. Like, have you ever heard like of, um, have you ever heard of the Russian uh, president, Peter the Great? Uh, Gray, he, it's Pete. Uh, or, or, uh, like uh, Peter Rabbit. Stubby, yeah, Peter Rabbit. Yeah, um, famous Peter. Peter's. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm just saying I wasn't talking about the flatbread that Jesus probably did eat. I was talking about his friend who also You're talking you know what, about manna from heaven. Right. Well, no. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. here's here's yep, what yep, I'm yep, yep. here's what I would love to ask is just that, you know, you w was it always coming in these ways that you denied Christ over and over? What was that final time though when you didn't see it on the little toy car or you didn't see it when you were doing drugs? Like when when was the time you really knew? You know, so I have a, a really good friend, uh, Pamela, Pamela Liverson. And, uh, you know, she, she had a rough upbringing. She had a rough go. We've been best friends forever. You know, we live together. Um, we have a house together, bought property, my best nice. friends. Um, she, I remember one day her saying, that in the eyes of God, um, everyone's loved. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't know why that's the time that it hit me. And then I, um, I, uh, she kissed me on the mouth and, oh, wow. um, oh, no. it felt like, it felt like God was accepting me. Wow. Um, into his family. That's cool. And that, uh, you know, where two or more are gathered. That's right. I felt like all those other times, I was kind of like, you know, even with old Gene strung out, he wasn't really that present. So mm. it felt like all those other times I was kind of by myself, you know, reading yeah. these things or seeing these signs. But then having my good best friend of 40 years sitting there with me, telling me about God, I felt the presence of God. Yeah. You know? That is And then so I, uh... She gave me the booklet that she was given, and I went through it, and, you know. And then later that day, confirmation, I had my uh, my concealed carry on me, and I uh, also had my Bible. You know, I always make sure I have both when I leave the house. Awesome. Uh, she had given me, uh, like, that Gideon Bible, you know. And so when I left the house, I uh, just randomly opened it, um, to uh, Psalm, Psalms one forty four one, uh, and that says, "Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, and my fingers for battle." Wow! And I had my hand on my Glock awesome. at that moment, and wow. I was like, "I know my purpose is to keep the keep the fold safe," wow. you know? Yes. And uh, yeah, then your guys's uh, your guys' church was the next church I visited, and that's bada bing, wow. bada boom. Wow! Whoa. And I'm looking at the Bible you're holding up there now. There is a bullet stuck in it. Yeah. Was how did that get there? That actually is just a stray bullet. I was in the oh, backyard. From, oh, from uh, your trying own to gun? shoot a weasel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh wow! You got to keep your house safe too from those groundhogs. In that right. eradicate your yard. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I, I I shot one clean in the head, but it passed through the Bible first. Wow. 
Wow, that is a God thing. I'll tell you what, Steb. I'm sorry, Hallie, before we move on, so were you holding up the Bible? I'm trying to understand where. So did you shoot at the thing, it went through its head, and then it ricocheted back through the Bible? Or were you holding up the Bible and trying to shoot it through the Bible? That's a great question. So, uh, you know, usually I just sit on the back porch and uh, enjoy a nice lemonade. Pamela, she often makes dinner for me. Okay, um, cool. Uh, so she had just made me a sandwich. I'm sitting there, and I was reading the Bible, and I had my Glock on me. And so, okay. um, you know, anytime they pop their heads up, I'm just ready to go. So I kind of was just a moment of fumbling the sandwich in the Bible, and I shot, and it went through. It's actually the sandwich, too. So, yeah, I'm that, still not uh, getting a, a super clear picture of how it would go through. So you go, you're kind of juggling the sandwich in the Bible yeah, and the jumble. Like imagine Cirque du Soleil and there's a groundhog. That's kind of, it was a, it was a crazy juggling motion and, uh, it happened fast. It was really yeah. fast. And, uh, you know, I still carry that Bible because it saved my life in many ways. Luckily, wow. hopefully, um, no, I don't uh, have to have that on me. If somebody's opening fire on me, though, you know, but right. uh, I'm still, yeah, really challenging story to kind of picture in your mind, because right now I have three distinct objects, a circus performer, a weasel, a Bible, I guess, and a sandwich now and a gun and a bullet. Anyway, yeah, that's a. Uh, Fascinating. Well, well, real quick, Stebby, I just wanted to ask, and forgive me if this is too personal a question, but your roomie, Pamela, does she happen to be Italian? Because um, I know Italians kiss on the mouth sometimes, and it doesn't mean something. I've learned it's cultural, and it's okay, even though it might make people uncomfortable, and their lips might be even a little bit open, and you might even feel some wetness from their mouth. And it's like, wow, this is a real mouth kiss. It's even a wet one, and it's on my mouth, and I'm not stumbling in the flesh because they're Italian, and it's just something they do. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it happens well, to everybody. It's, it's, it's part of her culture. She's from Iowa. Um, you know, she grew up with two brothers, a sister. Um, she's not Italian. Um, oh, I think ooh. she's Irish. So another I one. Oh. So maybe the, that, that's, I know I, that's similar, but I just worry that if she's not Italian and she's kissing you on the mouth, she might be, you know, uh, I don't know. The evil one might be trying to tell her she's gay. I'm sure she's not. But sometimes the evil one lies to you and says, guess what? You're into and the says, same guess sex. guess what? Yeah. And it's, you know, and, uh, you know, we've gotten that accusation before, you know. I couldn't see. I um, can't imagine why. No, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, anybody that comes over to my house, you know, they ask about the photos we got on the wall. You know, we have, um, we should have a dog. We sleep in the same bed. Um, well, I was going to say, is that Pamela on the back of your right hand? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a really we were, oh, we went out to dinner. We went to dinner at um, Hard Rock Cafe. Oh. Uh, and, uh, yeah, she she really likes wearing white, and I wore a three-piece suit. I'm a little bit more, you know, I, I grew up with some bikers, and, you know, and she uh, grew up a little more dang. She did pageants and stuff like that. Yeah. You got her face um, tattooed on your hand? Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, as and that's my most complicated tattoo because I ask God for forgiveness, but also she's my biggest blessing. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So, but we do get that accusation, but you know, we're just we're just really good friends. Great friends. Yeah, kind of like a, is it David and Jonathan in the yeah, Bible? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I totally yep. get that. I really get that. I yeah. totally get that. Yeah. I really really get that. I totally yeah. get that. Yeah. Yeah. You and so I really, get that? And, and I really get that. Yeah. The, yeah. The, I you, mean, you and you and. Yeah. And I totally get that. You and you understand a, it. I really get it. You've got an accountability, buddy. And I totally get that. Yeah. Do you guys kiss on the mouth sometimes? Uh, you and Clay no. Mason Bannerman? I mean. Oh, no. I'm not talking about him. I'm just saying in general, um, oh. I can I can see uh, why it's good to have a friend like that. But has, never, yeah. but has Clay Mason Bannerman ever been like spotting you in a, in a bench press or something? And he leans down to uh, reach I don't really it. need a spotter anymore, Hallie. Oh. Uh, oh. anyway, um, what I did want to, uh, ask you, uh, Steady is, um, just about the idea that 
from this violent upbringing mm. and this violent formation story that you have had at times had to use violence to yeah. problem solve, haven't you? Because oh, yeah. even here at the church, every now and then, um, you know, you've had to use Pamela, that right hand, <laughs> you've had to use that right hand uh, to, to enforce the rules. Yeah. And probably also in the CMAs. I mean, and I'm talking about the Christian Mice Motorcycle Association. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you guys look tough. Do, yeah. do you find that to be a contradictory idea that Jesus said turns the other cheek, you know, turn the other cheek and oh, that yeah. and that at times mm. you have to, you know, you've got to kick some butt, don't yeah. you? Yeah, well, and I mean, it's really hard because I think sometimes people see Jesus as wishy-washy, but, mm -hmm. you know, he went into the tabernacle and turned over the tables. You know, it's pretty violent. Yeah, um, that's some true. Trans yeah, in some translations, he was cursing them out, you know. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. In old Hebrew, he basically is like, you motherfuckers, get out of here, fuck you, damn it, you be a shit. And it's uh, crazy. That sounds like you the know? message or the wow Bible, I bet. It is a they, wow they Bible. Have, yeah, they do a yeah. wild translation. Yep. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep. it goes straight straight from Hebrew to the wow Bible is what I hear. And really? So, um, yeah, but I, I felt conflicted about it because my whole life's kind of been violence, you know? Like, mm. once I hit a guy with my motor motorcycle and Big Sur, uh, I don't know if oh, he's wow. all right. Um, oh, you know, is it hit and time. run? Yeah. Oh, but... wow. <laughs> well, I want to know about yeah. that. I mean, you were just going and he stood in front. Well, how, how did that happen? I mean, I'd say there's about 40 or 50 of us on these bikes a lot of yeah. the time. Um, and we were going up Big Sur and yeah, he was, apparently they were doing the Big Sur marathon and we weren't notified. So, are you talking about Big Sur the place, or are you talking about Big Sur the nightclub? Um, there is a Big Sur in Big Sur, I oh, think. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you're, I think both. And he may have been. I, I thought, you know, it was. I should have known he was wearing like reflective gear, and but we didn't know they were doing that marathon, and they close off part of the one. So we just kept driving, and it was a massacre. You know. Wow. Wow. And was that was that in Hell's Angels days or CMA days? Uh yeah, that was Hell's Angels. That's when I knew I had to try and find um maybe another organization to be a part of. You know? That was your yeah. rock bottom. Uh -huh. That was my rock bottom. Uh -huh. And it's hard, you know, because you know, I feel like I I ask God for forgiveness for that all the time, but um you know, it's I I uh, I don't know, I, I think that guy's dead. Oh, uh, wow. Well, it's covered in the blood if you've confessed. And to be honest with you, Stebby, I'm kind of impressed because to hit somebody in a car and keep going, that's no thing. But to hit somebody on a motorcycle and not wipe out and be able to stabilize yourself, you must be a good rider. Right. Maybe there's a I'm, lesson in that. Yeah. I think the lesson is I was prepared. You know, wow. I was prepared for anything. Um, I'm, you know, I don't mean to gloat, but I'm a really good rider. Mm, you know, I... Uh, I I was born on a bike. My mom gave birth oh. on a Harley. A Harley really? Accident. Yeah, we were heading to the hospital, and she couldn't she couldn't hold me in. Oh my goodness! And was she driving? No, she was riding shotgun. So oh, I was oh born so in that it was a side by side. Oh, mm -hmm. sidecar. I was born sidecar in a sidecar. And cool. they just kept going. You know, <laughs> kept going. It's it funny, actually. My day. I uh, changed my birth name. My birth name was Hillary Duff. Is that right? Beautiful. Yeah, and oh. I didn't know in the States that was um, oh, a popular name. Yeah, oh, yeah. right. So, yeah, so my mom just named me that in the sidecar. And then, uh, you know, when I came over to the States, I changed my name to something that feels more like me, you know. Yeah, you look like a stebby. You look like a stebby shark. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I have I think that I know three different Hillary Duffs just right here at Broad Ripple High. I mean, it's a very popular name. It's a really popular name, and I didn't know it was someone... Fame, you know, my mom had never heard of any of that. You know, a Duff is a very popular uh, name in France, too. Oh. La Duff. And, and, and La Stebby Duff. is a Ste Stebby kind of sounds like a mashup of something like Steve and Debbie or something. Are those your parents? Yeah. So actually, those were what you would call my mom and dad of the Hells Angels. Oh. So you, you're, you hit it right on the head there. Yeah. Nice. So I just took their names as if, you know. They're my God-given parents. Wow. I was pretty. It was almost cult-like, you know. I'm. I'm glad really? I. 
I'm glad I got out of there, you know. Well, as a female in the Hells Angels, were you constantly having to fight the uh, guys off of you? Because I'm sure they're just all riled up and horning, hornbagging it because they got this big, powerful motor between their legs all day long. And then they get off and they're ready to keep the vibrating going. And they just want to, you know, jump on and start riding a gal. And there you are. I mean, did you have to fight them off with your handgun? I mean, uh, you would think, but, uh, you know, Pamela and I never had issues. Is that right? I don't know why. I don't oh, know why. You really? know, I mean, yeah, all the other, all the other girls in the club, you know, they had issues. Sure. But for some reason, Debbie and I, they never looked twice at us, you know? Is that right? I mean, because that's the way God made men. He made them to be very visually stimulated yeah. by women. And they have such strong sex drives that if they're around a female and she's given off all of them pheromones and whatnot, they could just be overtaken with their desire and just attack her without even being conscious that they're doing it. So you're hey. lucky. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, I honestly, my entire life, I've, I, uh, I've never, really, I've never been hit on by a man. Is that and right? I, That's insane to think yeah, about. And I, well, and it's wild. Cause I actually, I, um, I didn't think about it until you brought it up. Yeah. Really? Maybe it's because yeah. these fellas think that you're a little man. I mean, you got big muscles. You yep. kind of are dressed in all black leather. You got a short yeah. haircut. You can't see past your Ave or you can't see past these um Terminator glasses you have on. Maybe they're mistaking you for a petite fella. They might be. And you know what? I hear that if you're a woman of quality, you're intimidating, you know. That's right. Like, right. well, like they only approach you if they if they know they can show up, you know, yeah. and I feel like I this is a safe place and I can say this in front of you, too. And even though I say this all the time in front of ladies that I know, maybe some of these ideas are a bit overblown where all these ladies are always saying men are always hitting on me and men are always catcalling me and men are always mm. doing this and that. And maybe that's just a bit of an urban myth. And here, yeah. I think today we can, you know, obviously we all agree that that's probably not happening as much as uh, a lot of ladies are saying. Well, you don't hit on women. I've never, never seen you do it once. So it stands to reason that no men are, you know? That's right. Yeah. These gals are probably just conflating these things to make themselves feel important. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and it's, it's a sad thing, you know, because I didn't even think about it. You know, the, all the all the guys in the Hell's Angels treat me like one of them. Yeah. You know, mm. they're well, surprised I when they found out I was a woman. So R yeah, really? maybe you're you're right in in saying what you did. You know, it's funny, Hallie, and I I realize this. I guess I didn't realize this until we were about halfway through this episode, which was when you were saying uh, that it might be a problem the optics of her living with uh, Pamela uh, um, together. I just was like, what is she talking about? Because I guess up until that point in the episode, I thought you were a, I kind of thought you were a guy because, you, you know, and it just, it just would kind of surprise me because even though your name is Stebby, which I think, you know, starting there, Stebby, not really yeah. a name that you associate with a man or a lady. It's, it's masculine. It's, it is a masculine it, name. It's almost like a yeah. name you don't even think of as a name, you know? Yeah. It's just kind of androgynous sounding yeah i and i and i you know and I, I can't tell if you have a chest underneath the leather jacket it looks kind of flat like a wall and you your know? last name is shock yeah that's and you very ride masculine. a giant motorcycle an animal, and you can't really tell what the gender of those things are right that's and true that is true isn't it i yeah. mean you always just assume shocks of guys yeah, yeah. i've never and seen a female shark girls. i've That's never true. seen a female shark they're the female sharks just as flat as the man i it's mean true they don't have i don't see any curves on a female shark and so no, like, i guess yeah i was just surprised the whole time that that would even be an issue but now i i see very clearly that it could be but maybe it's just you know Maybe this week, and I know it's a big week for, with the CMA's bike week. You know, mm, there are motorcycles yeah, yeah. all over campus right now. People camping. Oh, yeah. It's um, fun. That, you know, it's it's really a, a, an exciting time around Twin Hills. But maybe, you know, since you are going to be, uh, what, what is it? You, you're sort of the the master of ceremonies or yeah. something uh, for the yeah, bike week? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, basically, I, I host it. I you know, book all the bands and, you know, make sure everybody's getting food. And I kind of just organize it all. Like, if it was, like, a film set or something, I'd probably be, like, the... The, the best well, one. Well, not the producer. I, probably not that, yeah. No. The the director? Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah, yeah, I probably be you, something you like you can that. you can be the Alec Baldwin on set because you got a handgun. <laughs> exactly. Except for I know how to fire this thing. And That's there's right. a groundhog, they're out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, maybe we could call you the mistress of ceremonies just so that there's no confusion. No confusion. And if I might offer yeah. you a word basket of encouragement, Gray, I think it's just a testament to how pure of heart you are that you did not see a, a woman that is uh, sitting in front of you that you could be all lusty for and having sick thoughts about. You don't even see when a woman is directly in front of you. You don't even think about it because you're keeping your thoughts yeah. pure. Exactly. When in a, like, uh, like myself, an attractive woman. It's sitting in front of you, you know, and I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty scandally clad. I got my neck showing. I got my wrists yeah. out, out to, you know, yeah. you could have, you could ask a whole bunch of questions that are inappropriate and you did. So yeah. that's just, that's just proof right there. You Thank know you. that. Yeah. It's it, and yeah. I just that I don't see ladies. I mean, even she was even pulling her shirt up, showing the two pitas on the back of her back. And, yep. uh, I know. and I, I didn't say PETA. 